sit here and I'll drink my tea, which would be lovely, but people like to talk. So I try to say a few things that might be uh, provocative, but I really would encourage you all to, to, we can really talk about kind of anything. And so for anybody who reads my site, you know kind of most of what I think about this topic, which means you, you're welcome to ask me anything about those things. Um, how many people here are, are familiar with the program that I have up now? I should, should ask PD, yeah. Sort of, but are you all kind of PD, I mean, are you expert PD users or you just kind of know what it is? I, I just use it as a toolbox whenever I need it. Help. So you know it a little bit? Yeah, I, I know it enough to to make work whatever I need, but I don't I don't start with it exclusively, it's just handy as a tool to, you know, input output with data. Yeah, sure. So as an in-between program I use it often. Yeah, yeah. Are any of you completely unfamiliar with it? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not, you know, <laughs> in a very limited circle, it's very well known. For most normal people, it's not known at all, so that, that would make some sense. Um, why am I in airplane mode? <laughs> airplane mode off. Cool. Um, so I, I, I kind of brought this along because this is sort of what I'm working on at the moment. Um, well, just to, to, to back up a little bit, since, since I'm a, you know, my background is as a piano player, so uh, I, I, a lot of my ideas kind of come from, from the piano still. So I try to do, explore other avenues of sound, but I do return to the piano a whole lot. And so a lot of my music lately has kind of come from these little snippets um, of piano recordings. So, for instance, um, well, I have this, I, I've had all, uh, whole pieces ju that just started with this little snippet of piano. Um, if I can remember where it is. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is, was a kind of a funny story because I, um, I found this sample in my hard drive. <laughs> And I know that I played it, but I don't. I think I did it. You know, was playing just a lick through a, a delay, and I know I bounced it out of Ableton, but I don't actually remember playing it or how to play it. But um, just as kind of an indication of my of my own process, um, so often you know you can wind up with a little snippet of music. Because, so I just found this on my hard drive one day and, um, and wound up making a whole track out of this little, it's like 14 second snippet. So it's funny, you know, you, you kind of, um, I think a lot of the people that you would see today will be working with kind of visual process. For me, it's not so much about keeping sketches on paper around, as it is kind of keeping um, sonic sketches around when I'm working musically. Um, it's, it's those little snippets that you kind of do in sort of weird, lonely moments or something that, that wind up leading to composition. So the nice thing about PD is the ability to kind of reinterpret all these, um, to reinterpret those sounds. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, part of the reason I use sort of PD to do sound stuff and processing to do kind of visual things, uh, or those are sort of my two most common go-to tools. And what's great about them is that they give you this blank screen in the same way that you get a blank screen in a, in a sketchbook, right? So when I'm away from my computer, I always have my, like I went out to, to dinner last night and had my sketchbook with me at dinner. Um, so I always keep blank paper with me if I'm away from the computer. But with the computer, if you want that kind of feeling of blank paper, um, what's great about this environment and why I think people return to PD and its commercial cousin, Max MSP, is that you can just sort of start and, and start with only what you need. So if, if you kind of, want an oscillator, you know, um, you can just sort of type in the object for an oscillator and just begin with that and um, uh, make a really simple patch. Just to kind of show how stupidly simple this environment is. Um, for those of us who, who worked with analog sound instruments, they, if you've seen them use this kind of patch cord interface that came from telephone switchboards, literally, and the interface in PD works very similarly, where you just kind of draw connections between modules. Having worked with those, so there's all you need to do to get a, uh, an oscillator. Having worked with those environments, um, you know, the, the problem with them is you always kind of run out of modules or run out of patch cords. 
and and or then your patch cord would get you kind of have a long like a long patch cord when you needed a short one and then you have this sort of spaghetti all over the place and then you can't really remember what you've done. Um, we're nostalgic about these things, but they're kind of hard to use. The computer is great for this. You can really represent the flow of signal through these uh, visual lines. So like here's the patch that I'm working on. Now. So this takes some um, these are some other. Well, actually, I should show you the, the, the sounds. So this is another example of this kind of sketching idea. Um, I had. Uh, um, I was uh, my, back when I was living in New York. My bathroom was being renovated, so I had to move into my friend's apartment. And luckily enough, my friend had this grand piano. So I wound up with this sort of like kind of silly set of little sketches that I just recorded, like, just kind of fiddling around. Musically, it's completely uninteresting. It sounds like Debussy on drugs or something. Uh, you know, um, but you can kind of take these things and then reinterpret them. So I kind of knew as I was playing them that I, these were all going to be very abstract. And I was just fiddling around and noodling, as my mom used to describe the way that I would play the piano. Um, but I had sort of harmonic ideas in mind. And so with the computer, you can s sort of transform the way that time works in those recordings, right? So that instead of, instead of time kind of progressing at a linear rate, you can navigate the way that you play over time. Um, so you can lock in, well, let's actually make some sounds. So there's one of those recordings. that I'm fiddling around with and sketching it. And then once you kind of come up with a, a structure that you like and a way of interacting with it that you like, the relevance to some of these uh, game and iOS application projects is we can now take this environment and uh, embed it inside an application. So if you were to, when you work with composers and musicians, we're all, a lot of us are kind of familiar with, the, with PD and know how to get around it and how to make sounds. Um, you can now say to a musician or a sound person, um, hey, go make us a nice sounding soundscape that will interact as you move the phone around or, or that will create a music score and sound effects for this game. And they can do it in this environment that they're comfortable with. And then you can um, take that and, and, and put it inside an iPhone app. And because it's free and open source, um, you can do that for free. So you don't need a you know, special PD license to be able to do that. Uh, you can just kind of take... Did someone uh, already do this? Uh, you 
say it's possible, but is it already done? It's already done. So okay. I was actually the secret thing that I was going to show, but we should uh, record. Is this? Is, is this is uh, my Dropbox. Uh, so the environment's called libpd. Here it is, here's its, um, well, here's my blog post on it. Um, it's called libpd, L-I-B-P-D. Um, and uh, it's about to get a new home on GitHub. It's right now in Gatorius. But we're about, about any day now, once I sit down and do it, we're about to put this environment out on, uh, on GitHub. And it takes all of this stuff that you see here, so you, you, you obviously don't want to run this weird, ancient-looking graphical interface on your iPhone. And um, the way that this talks to audio assumes that you're on a desktop computer, right? So it's seeing the audio interfaces that are connected to this Mac and the MIDI interfaces that are connected to this Mac. Um, and that's lovely when you're on a desktop. But what you want when you're on a mobile device or if you're embedding in another application is you want to get rid of the, all of the hardware support and you want to get rid of this graphical interface. And you just want this, the guts of this, the thing that's making the music and sound and everything, to operate inside whatever you're doing, whether it's a game or a, uh, or a performance tool or a tool, sound toy or whatever it is. So what libpd does is it, it, it takes the logic of this. You author in this environment, right? So you author in this GUI that someone is comfortable in. And um, you, you can... Um, then take that and put it inside any application for Mac or Windows or Linux or iOS or Android or you can write in Python or C or Java or whatever you want uh, for free. And of course the mobile thing is especially appealing. So for instance, let's find my Pugs Pug Love. This is not my creation, but this is an example of what people have done. Well, actually, have you seen the Inception app? Have you seen this? So this was the first major application to, to uh, run with this library that, that we created. Uh, it was myself and some other people from the PD community, and the primary author was a guy named, uh, is a guy named Peter Brinkman, uh, formerly of Berlin, now of New York. I'm formerly of New York, now of Berlin. Um, but Peter Brinkman did it, the primary authoring, and then um, uh, I worked on a version for processing and worked on some of the design. So this was the first application that it shipped in, this app Inception. So when you buy Inception off the Apple marketplace, you're actually getting PD. You don't know that you are, but PD is running inside of Inception, making all these sounds and interactions. And there's other stuff coming. We hoped when we did this, so there, the, in our repository there are free tools and there are things that you can use to play your own patches on these devices. Um, and, and you can get all that stuff for free. And there's some other uh, kind of little applications. One of the things I'm really excited about hasn't been announced yet. And it's the first, this is kind of what we imagined would happen with this, with this creation. It's, it's a game. Um, and the, the game is also kind of a sequencer. So you'll hear that the game mechanics itself are a resource gathering thing. Uh, these, these little dogs go out and gather resources, and that's how you play the game. They're like basic resource gathering in games like StarCraft, except it's little dogs. And uh, it's all sequenced so that you get this kind of cool sounding music. As you play. And eventually, I think there'll be kind of different drum kits and things be able to get from this one. Musical artists might change. Instead of just re-skinning the way the application looks, you might change the way the sound is. Specific musical artists kind of drum kits. Um, but this application, even in this demo, is, is using this library. So they authored the musical structures the way that we sound, which is very, very fast. And, um, and then PD is running actually inside this application. So what's cool about this is you're able to make stuff happen a whole lot faster than you used to. You know, to make sound for games, and, um, a lot of times what you do is just have a kind of 
pre-composed samples. So you sit in your kind of studio software environment and you make some sounds and you slice them up and you drop them into a game. And then that's the sound for the game. With this, you start prototyping right away. You're just saying, oh, what if this, what if, you know, as this pug moves over here, we change the parameter on this effect or we kind of change the sound. But you never switch between prototyping and the finished application. The prototype is the software. You could release you can release it with the G and it's very reliable and stable and resource uh, friendly. And um, all of your kind of crazy ideas you actually get to ship. So this is definitely one of the things I'm super excited about. This is a very one sorry, I, I got it. That, the, so that's my introduction. <laughs> that's what I thought I would say. Questions or interests, or we can talk about something entirely different. <laughs> and this is something that this is still a secret project, or it's about to go this pug loves beats as a secret project. I think if you go to that URL, it might be there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's, not, it's 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 a, it's a sort of well, secret is the wrong word. Yeah. It doesn't show up on Google. Don't it if did. you would <laughs> avoid publicizing it. That would be great. <laughs> He's not quite ready to publicize it. Um, I think that I'll be publicizing it very, very soon, though, probably with some other information that isn't there or that I haven't divulged. But that's kind of what excites me, playing around with sounds and getting this stuff to, you know. So like this, this particular application, uh, or the particular soundscape that I've made, I have this, this is not an application by me, but a, 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 some friends who also live in Berlin. So you wind up with a crazy kind of interface in the, um, on the iPad that I've been using. Um, but what's sort of exciting about the direction where we're going is creating crazy things like this is getting a whole lot easier. You know, now you can use this environment open frameworks on the iPad. You can use processing on the Android tablets. Um, and then with the stuff that's happening with LibPD, it's possible that instead of using this as your remote control from your computer, that we're getting closer to being able to just just have the, everything in this interface. Um, Do you know about all the projects that uh, people use uh, your open source? With, using LibPD? Yeah. Um, Chris, this guy Chris McCormick has done a few. There aren't any big ones. But I think those two are the biggest ones. people work with it, and but you don't even know about it. Yeah, sure. it's possible. But I, I mean, I think people are pretty good about talking about using it. Yeah. Um, we, I mean, people like to usually like to kind of brag about using it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm sure there's some. It hasn't been available for very long, um, so I think there will be more. This is also the nature of the license that PD is under. It's not under a GPL. It's under a BSD license. So that means it's it's very. The good news is it's very compatible with Apple's kind of weird terms of service. Um, it also means that we don't necessarily need to know if someone's yeah. using it or not, um, which I guess is kind of a philosophical decision. Um, the other project that that I'm working on, which is here in a very battered form, is the Meeblet. It's this open source synthesizer, which I'm the co-designer. Um, this It normally has caps on these knobs. It normally has more than two screws holding it together in the back, and it normally makes sound. Let me explain. <laughs> um, I've been updating the firmware, so I'm using fewer screws, and because I need to, for this version of it, I have to actually take it apart to update the firmware. I've taken the caps off. It's also lumpy because this uh, particular Meeblet, which is Meeblet number two, has traveled 95,000 kilometers with me in the past 12 months. So it's it's been very abused, and its ground wire fell out last night in the hotel room because I you don't have you don't have the experience of using the synthesizer this way only I do. We fixed it so that now you can use the USB port to program it so that you don't have to uh, you don't have to take it apart every time you update. It. But unfortunately, that means it's just here modeling its poor battery. Um, it does make sounds. It's called the Amoeba. Um, so, the 
this is the announcement saying that we did actually finally ship some firmware. And I'll play some Meeple sounds in the background and continue our conversation. Would you like something ambient or something a little more rhythmic? Rhythm. Rhythmic. to get into this, I don't know, the <laughs> world of PD and, and manipulating sound, I can recommend where to go. That's helpful for people who are interested in it. So like where to go to learn. Where to go? Yeah. Um, there are a couple of good t tutorials. This one is really good. It's in English, German, and Spanish, which is nice. pd-tutorial.com. It's a little more advanced, so since there's some more advanced people here, the advanced people will like this one a little better. Um, a bit more basic, although also quite good and, and kind of, if you're new to it, worth, worth going through. It's called the Floss Manuals, if you've seen this site. One of the Blender guys is here today too, and there's a good Blender tutorial. Lots of open, good open source tutorials. But it's called flossmanuals.net. Some of this I think is multilingual. I think this particular tutorial is in English only. Um, but it's flossmanuals.net. Oh, SS, like the stuff that you stick in your teeth. Slash your uh, dad. I don't know actually if there's a. What language is this? Uh, I tried it to change the first. Oh, oh, oh. Um, but I, I think this one is only in English. Oh, okay. I don't think it's been regionalized. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Uh, the other thing that's really helpful that I actually used in the patch that I just showed is something called rjlib, which lives here on GitHub. It's, it's kind of hard to find, but the GitHub site is github.com slash rjdj slash rjlib. And uh, what this thing gives you is a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, a whole bunch of stuff that's kind of built for you. And this is kind of what's great about PD is that if you, I mean, having just said that what's great about it is that you build from scratch, the other thing that's great about it is that you can build from scratch using building blocks, right? So you start with a blank page. You only create what you need. But if, you, if what you need happens to be like a reverb, or something to kind of change a musical pattern around, or, or something to or filter. Somebody has probably already built that for you. So not only the kind of objects in this uh, environment, but there are also these things that people have already built. So if you if you if you open the RJ Lib, you'll find a file inside there called Overview.pd, and this is just collections of really great pre-built stuff. You could probably use a little more documentation which at some point. I'll write for a little bit of it. But for instance, if I open up that synth section, we get kind of the, all your basic bread and butter synthesizers. And then you can just kind of copy these into your own um, patches. So if you need a, an electronic drum machine and you just want to play with that, you can just load that into PD. And if later you decided you wanted to learn how it was built, you can also go in and, and see how it works. So like, here's the bass drum. And uh, um, the bass drum is just synthesizing a really simple low oscillator. So you can kind of go in and muck with that and see how it works and change it. So it's a, it's a really nice way to work. And it's, it's a way that you don't kind of get from the commercial software, which is lots of black boxes, right? You know that they're somehow making a drum sound. But if you wanted to figure out how it works, you can't really find out how it works. Does that mean that we're out of time? Yes, that we... Uh, All right. We should round up. If there are any questions? Uh, do you have any experience working uh, visually with your data? What? Do you have any experience working visually with your data, with GEM? Uh, I, I, I prefer...